Look for patterns and represent generalizations algebraically. Patterns are everywhere. They're in nature, and we can emulate these patterns using algebra often. And the Greeks are really good at observing patterns and emulating them using mathematical relations. Here's our first problem. The pattern of dots shown below continues after step four. Which rule can be used to determine the number of dots appearing in the nth step? Well, the first step we need to take is to make a table of values. So we put the step number on the left as the independent quantities, and we put the number of dots as the dependent quantities on the right, correspondingly. The next thing we do is we place the values in our calculator under L1 and L2. So we do this by pressing STAT, ENTER, and we enter the four points. The next thing we do is go to Y equals, make sure our plot one is turned on. We do that. And then we go to zoom nine, which is zoom STAT, and that puts our four points for us. Does that look like a line? Not really. It looks more like a curve, doesn't it? Anyway, all we need to do is we have our answer choices. We need to just enter them. So we go ahead into Y equals, and we enter choice A. We do that by entering uh, x times quantity x plus 1 divided by 2. And we graph that. We see it fits these points just ideally. We try the other ones to be sure. There's that one and b is not right, c is not right, d is not right. So a is our correct answer. Let's go on to the next problem. Store display is created by arranging rows of soup cans in the shape of a triangle. There are 20 cans in the first row, in the second row there are 18 cans, the third row contains 16 cans, and so forth. Which rule gives the number of cans in the nth row where n is less than or equal to 10? Well, it's the same procedure as the last one, really. We make a table. We put the number of rows there on the left, 1, 2, and 3, and corresponding to them, the number of soup cans in each row. Then we enter the data in L1 and L2. So here we go in STAT ENTER. We have the data from the old problem here to get rid of it. We just arrow up to L2, press clear, then press the down arrow. Let's clear out L1. Let's go up to it, press clear, and then the down arrow. Now we can go ahead and enter our three points. And we can just go ahead and go to zoom nine. We see the three points. And then we can enter the data. We enter choice A, 20N, which would be 20X. And we see that it's not a line that you know, goes through the first point, but not through the other two. And if we're just looking at that first point, it could uh, trick us into giving a wrong answer, couldn't it? So we cross that out. And in Y equals, if you notice, all these other lump B and D have positive slopes. We need one with a negative slope, so let's choose C. Let's enter that, and if I'm right, it will fit the points, and indeed, that is the right choice. So that is our correct answer, and there they are. Okay, uh, we have another problem it's similar to the first one we did with dots steps and numbers of dots. What I'd like you to do is stop the video, see if you can do this one by yourself, then start it to see how you did. Okay, here's the data entered under L1 and L2. Here are the points. And then we tried the different choices. We tried uh, B and C here. Let's try choice D and it does fit. So the answer is going to be 3x minus or 3n minus 1. Okay, we have another representing patterns problem. The seat seats in an auditorium are arranged so there are 24 seats in the front row, 28 in the second, 32 in the third, and so forth. Which rule could be used to determine the number of seats in the rth row where r is less than or equal to 30? So let's go ahead and stop the video, see if you can work this problem, then start it to see if you got it right.
Okay, here are the points entered under L1 and L2. Here are the points that are graphed. And we can enter. We've entered A, B, and C, and another, none of them were right, so we enter the choice D is 4x plus 20. We graph that, and it is right, hits all the points. So D is our correct answer. Let's summarize. We need to first make a table with the points. Second, enter from the table into L1 and L2. Independent quantities go under L1. Dependent quantities go under L2. We need to graph the plotted points with zoom stat or zoom 9. And then we can enter each multiple choice into y equals and graph each choice until we have the right answer. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you come back and check some of our other videos. Thanks for coming. Finding functions from graphs using the graphing calculator. You might recall in an earlier video, setting the view screen from 